floor, everybody. Thank you very, very much for coming out. Um, I think we call this the Winter's End Ball, but uh, today I woke up there was snow, so I'm here, you know, I don't know. But I think spring is coming. Um, is uh, Nick here and Tim? Tim, can you come up as well? Okay. John, just use the mic. Oh, you need that? Yeah, this it will be. That thing. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to try to keep this brief. I have two particular, one for Carl and one for Vinny, so please bear with me. This is a really um, awesome night for these two families because they mean so much to the city of Brockton. So rather than me wing it like I usually do, I wrote some things, so bear with me. So hello everybody and welcome to the 6th Annual Winterset Ball here in this historic War Memorial building in which Carl loved so much. I'd like to thank everybody on our committee who helped organize tonight's gala event, and especially my muses. Once again, you have done an incredible job setting up this historic building. Thank you so much for your hard work and commitment, because without your dedication, the parade and tonight's gala would not be possible. And especially thank you. And special thanks to my pal Nikki for keeping me focused and putting countless hours in to make sure everything is perfect. Mayor Capita, the City Council, and the Brockton Public Schools for supporting our annual holiday parade and all our corporate sponsors who generously sponsor, support us every year to make the parade and this event possible. Thank you to the many organizations Kyle was dedicated to, such as my fellow Masonic brothers, the Brockton Historical Society, and the Brockton High School Alumni Association, of which Bob Salzman is here representing, and for being with us, sharing this night with Kyle's family. The definition of community is all the people living in an area or a group or groups of people who share common interests, government, and often have a common cultural and historical heritage. I look into the crowd tonight and see so many familiar faces from the community I grew up in as a boy and a community vibrant with those manufacturing and blue collar values and a bright future for all of us created by a post-war economy. The Brockton Seal has three distinct words, education, industry, progress, all of which we as Brocktonians have proudly adopted. We had teachers, coaches, and business people who invested their time mentoring us to ensure a promising road ahead and to create a sense of place. Sound like a couple of the guys we're going to honor tonight? As we move forward towards the promise of Brockton's bright future and continue to share community and a sense of place, it is the history of this great city that presents the opportunity to create a common thread to bond our many cultures. And it is the youth of our great city that continues to promise and build a healthy, strong environment to live, work, and play so that our sense of place is common to all. The annual holiday parade, which has become a tradition now for 32 years, spanning three generations, showcasing the incredible talent of our youth. And I stress that because this is what this is all about. The incredible talent of our youth, students that you, Mr. McQueen, take care of for 40 years here in our city of Brockton. is the common thread connecting the history of Brockton through education, art, culture, and sports with the families of our great city representing over 40 different cultures. Earlier in the day, which is a great part of this day, we had families downstairs. I had the pleasure of recognizing the participants and families who won awards for Floats Essays, Art, which makes up the main components of our USA Christmas Top Parade. The winners of our float contest are third place, Brookfield School, second place, Massasoit Performing Arts, and first place, Love Alliance. I also had the honor of presenting a laptop to the Harbor One Cover Contest winner, Dora Duval, West Middle, along with honorable mentions to Lissandra Velasquez, Brockton High, Davi Demostini's Raymond School, and Sophia Averin, South Middle. When I tell you these families were so excited to be downstairs and to receive these honors, that's what makes it for me. I mean, they were all engaged, involved, and, and so sincere. I also had the honor of presenting a laptop to the James Edgar Award winner, Adamine Ulalele, and I knew I messed that name up this morning. And then also, uh, I said to him, if you can pronounce my name as it is in Armenian, then I'm going to give it back to you. So that was a nice chuckle. Uh, with honorable mentions to Lorelai Rojas, Avery O'Brien from Brookfield, and his Rye Smith from Brookfield as well. So tonight, we're gathered to give two recognition awards to men, both dear friends of mine, who best exemplify the body and soul of the city. First, the Good Samaritan James Edgar Community Service Award, and second, 
uh, in a first time ever presentation this year's parade marshal for Mr. Vincent McCrane. James Edgar Award is given annually to a person in the community who best exemplifies Edgar's spirit of generosity toward the city children, building a stronger community in tireless and selfless way. James Edgar was an immigrant from Edinburgh, Scotland who owned Edgar's department store in downtown Brockton. He was a very generous man who loved the children of Brockton, believed in them. He would dress up in a store and entertain all the children, and in 1890, he decided to put a Santa suit on, and the tradition lives on to today. He became America's first department store in Siena, and we own the story of that. Sounds so much like town. Past recipients have included Dave Gorman, Christina Lux, John Walden, James Jamulis, Dr. Claire Rapley, William McGauley, Officer Rosie Vasquez, and last year, Rick Saviano. This year's recipient, Kyle Landhorn, was a resident of Brockton for 79 years and a lifelong friend who had dedicated himself to the city and the youth of Brockton. I can't even tell you what he's done, because he's done so much. Our recipient, whose family will be receiving the award posthumously on Kyle's behalf meant a great deal to this community and was a mentor to me and gifted me my love for the history of Brockton. Kyle, in many ways, reminded me of what I've read about James Edgar. He was an entertainer. I used to love seeing him with that straw hat. That was awesome. A showman in so many ways, especially when he'd be teaching history on the many tours of the Historical Society and with me on our history tours of downtown Brockton. Standing on this very stage, telling the story about his father, how he you know, was at the Y, and then he walked down the south side, and you know, he went into the electric store, and he, you know, he was there for a week, and then he, he said, this is not it for me, I'm gonna open up my own business. I mean, he would tell this story, and he would tell it with so much pride, okay, and he would engage these kids, it was just unbelievable. Uh, he was an entrepreneur taking over his father's business and passing the legacy on to his children. He was a patriot who loved his country. He was a Brocktonian who loved his city. He was a family man who embraced his family responsibility. He was a Masonic brother who received the highest Masonic award that can be granted to a Mason from his lodge, the Joseph, Joseph Warren Medal. He was also the worshipful master at Baylor Sanford Lodge. And there's a whole other litany of things that he did for the, for the brotherhood. Kyle was a brother who understood the Masonic tradition, and I want to thank my fellow brothers who have come tonight in recognition of Kyle's lifelong work and dedication to our brotherhood. Kyle Landon was an extraordinary human being that made a mark on all of us with the humanity of his humble ways. There are very few who could navigate life through, uh, through life like Kyle, but then again, that's why he was so special. His love for family was his strength. His Masonic duty was his compass. His love for Brockton and his rich history we share will be his lasting gift that will continue to many of us who have spent countless hours under his tutelage. Those of us that you selected as your disciples will continue to honor you by teaching you of Brockton what you have taught us. In life, you gave us knowledge. In passing, you've given us a sense of place to pass on to future generations. You touch many, my friend, and as you look over us from above, I hope you make us proud. So at this time, I'd like to get Bob Salzman over here. Um, he will be the crowd. Uh, I'd also like to give the podium to uh, Nick uh, Giaquinto and to be out with the mayor because there's going to be a citation. And then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Tim Cruz. So Nick, all you have to play. Good evening, everyone. Unfortunately, the mayor couldn't be here this evening, but it's my privilege and honor today to be here to present this citation to the family of Carl and the home tonight. Uh, one quick story I have about Carl. I knew, you know, from time to time, he would always come into the mayor's office, and I knew if I heard that deep voice in the lobby that uh, I was going to have a 10, 15 minute conversation and learn something. So anytime I heard him come into the lobby of the mayor's office, I said to myself, you know what, I could use a 10 to 15 minute break and uh, I'll learn something I didn't know. Uh, that, I, that I did this morning. So, uh, Carl cared so much about our community, and uh, you know, there's about, I think there's only two people I know that can keep me on the phone for more than 40 minutes. One is Carl Landerholm, the other is John Merrigan. <laughs> but it's, Carl was such a great guy, and he, he's going to be missed, but it's, it's a real honor for me to be able to, to be here tonight and uh, present this citation to the family of Carl. Um, and it reads just as, just as this. Be it known that the mayor hereby extends his appreciation to the family of Carl Landerholm in recognition of his lifetime of dedication and service.
to his beloved city of Brockton as recognized by the 2018 Good Samaritan Medical Center James Edgar Community Service Award. Call possessed an encyclopedic knowledge of Brockton's history that he was always willing to share. His life epitomized community service. He worked tirelessly on behalf of Brockton High School students while also active in his Masonic Lodge. The Brockton Historical Society, Christ Congregational Church, and St. Paul's Soup Kitchen all benefited from Carl's hard work and generosity. Carl will be remembered fondly as a true champion in the City of Champions. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this citation to the family of Mr. Carl Anderholm as a symbol of our appreciation. The citation is duly signed by the Mayor of the City of Brockton on this day, the 23rd of March, 2019. Thanks, you. Thank you. I'm actually here on behalf of our state le legislative delegation, who had an event in Boston tonight and couldn't be here. But uh, particularly my brother-in-law, Jerry Cassidy, always looked up. He's known Carl since he was a, a young kid and went to school with some of Carl's children. And in fact, I have to apologize to Paul when he came in tonight. I called him Carl, because to me it's always been one word, Carl Landholm. Whenever you had a problem, or you tried to chase some piece of history down, call Carl, he'll know. And he always did, he always told us. So I do want to, uh, no, that's, that's Michael's, not, not yours. <laughs> Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives off offers its sincerest congratulations to the family of Carl Landerholm in recognition of Carl Landerholm receiving the 2018, 2018 James Edgar Community Service Award at the Winter's End Gala for his many contributions to our city. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors to the family. Given this 23rd day of March 2000, 2019 at the State House, Boston, Massachusetts by Robert A. DeLeo, Speaker of the House, signed by State Representative Claire Cronin, State Representative Michelle M. Dubois, and offered by Jerry Cassidy, State Representative. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our state delegation. We have a great team in, in the Commonwealth with Representative Cronin, and Representative Cassidy, and Representative Dubois. We all work very well together, and I'm very honored to be a part of that delegation. And I'm also honored to be here. I'm in between stops myself, and, um, but I was able to be here. Carl was not only a mentor and a historian, but a good friend to all of us here in Brockton, and a true champion. And, you know, as was mentioned by Nick, we've had a lot of conversations, and I've learned a lot about how he got into the business he owned and what he's done to our community and all the things he's given back to our community of Brockton. And I'm honored to give this award to his family. So this is to the family of Kyle Landholm, a recognition of Kyle's receipt of the 2018 James Edgar Community Service Award office at the Winter's End Celebration. And this is signed by the President of the Senate, Karen Spilka, the Clerk, Michael Hurley, myself, Mike Brady, and congratulations and thank you. So, the reason all these folks came out with their citations is because Mr. Landerholm received the 2018 James Egger Community Service Award. Um, this award is given to somebody who, in the spirit of James Egger, the first department store Santa, um, gives to the city and the youth of the city and the people of the city with just undying devotion and love, and that certainly embodies Carl. He was um, also, as part of the award, able to ride in the parade, and he had the best time. And I wish Shana was here because she, um, 
Shana drove him at the last minute because we lost our driver and I was scrambling the night before to find somebody to drive him and um, when I told Shana that I needed her, she stepped right up and she showed up and she drove him and she said he had the best time. He had groupies <laughs> um, blocking the car and he kept saying, this is so much fun, this is so much fun. So we're so happy that he was able to share that day, a beautiful day. So this um, award is presented to Carl Anderholm in recognition of your outstanding service and dedication to the city of Brockton. And I'm very pleased to present this on behalf of the Good Samaritan Medical Center. So I was just elected the chair of the Downtown Brockton Association, and uh, for some strange reason, the parade fell on me. And I, I'll, I'll tell you, at 32 years old, I, I did not want to do a parade. Nah, that was the last thing I wanted to do. So I reached up, because I felt like I was way out of my league here, and I reached up to my friend Vinny, and I asked him for some advice. So 
I said, John, we can't do this on a Friday night. The instruments froze, the kids were frozen, and there was hardly anyone here. There were no families. What are we out here for, right? Is that what you said? That's right. Yeah. He said, we could do it on a Saturday and make it more family friendly. He goes, I'm in. So those early years were like a Charlie Brown parade, right? <laughs> we had makeshift floats, we had matching units, but V was quietly building a music program that would become the best in the state and highlighting them every year in the holiday parade. He began by introducing a fourth grade music program which led to elementary school bands playing and marching in our holiday parade. And thanks to Mark Lindy and Brockton Community Cable, my brother Paul and I would brag to all who watched, sometimes with just a little embellishment, that we were the only city in the Commonwealth to showcase fourth or twelfth grade in a music program in a parade. <laughs> Vinny, your vision of how to build a music program is your genius and your legacy, and it must go on. Yes, together with the dedication of your music, your students in Brockton were able to make this more than a holiday parade, but truly a community affair, full of families, full of smiles, of which Brockton's young and old have enjoyed and felt proud for the last 28 years. If I heard it once, I've heard it a hundred times, and this is all because of you. These kids work so hard, they can march in our annual holiday parade. There are mothers and fathers who were chosen, who were in those fourth grade classes in the early years, who were grandchildren marching in, it's because of you. You've built a music program second to now in Massachusetts, and as a student just recently shared with me, Mr. Marion, as a young student in middle school, I dreamt that someday would be selected by Mr. McQueen to be in the marching band so that I could march and play the annual holiday parade. It's so exciting to turn from Belmont Street onto Main Street and see thousands of people watching us as we play, right? It makes us feel incredible. Well, if that doesn't say it all, I don't know what does. This is the story that you, sir, have created. You've touched thousands of students, many of who have gone on to become accomplished musicians, and you have done so in a humble, endearing, masterful way because it was always and always about your students. When Vinny found out that he was selected as parade master, he ran. Not quite. He said, I'll accept under one condition. I'll ride in the front of the parade as you request, but I have to walk with my band as we conclude the parade. I said, man, there's no problem. I said, the parade is like 45 minutes long. I says, you'll be able to circle around, regroup, and be right there as the maestro, maestro that you should be, right? So I assured him you'd have plenty of time to get back in the day. Did, did you make any time? Even we stopped that thing too, so that would happen. So Vinny, it's out of admiration, respect, and love that I'm able to present this award to you, my friend, and my Christmas card. Parade Marshal 2018, for all your dedication and hard work in building a music program that has recognized the best in Massachusetts and sharing it with all of us by showcasing these magnificent, talented students of yours in our annual parade. Thank you, sir. If I could have Nick come up and uh, also Tim, uh, we have some uh, citations and then we will pardon them. Okay. Vinny, just want to thank you for your community service. Uh, I know you've done a great debt to the city. And uh, the mayor and the city appreciate what you do on a daily basis. And uh, it was great to have you selected as the holiday parade marshal this year. So congratulations. Our official citation, as designated by the mayor, states, be it known that the mayor of Brockton hereby extends his appreciation to Vinnie Macrina in recognition of your selection as 2018 holiday parade marshal. For decades, Brockton High School students have not only exhibited musical excellence under your guidance, but acquire the work ethic and discipline necessary to stand out from the rest. Brockton High School Marching Band has long been a staple and a favorite of the downtown Brockton Holiday Parade, and you are truly deserving of the honor of Parade Marshal. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this citation to you as a symbol of our appreciation. This citation is duly signed by the Mayor of Brockton on this day, the 23rd of March, 2019. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Vinny.
once again, I'm here representing the uh, our state legislators, and I will say, not only has Vinny done all those things for all the kids in Brockton, but he is a wonderful representation for the kids that we have now, because if I recall the stories, you grew up in a house where English was not spoken. And so many of our kids grow up in houses now that where the English is not the first language. And they are able to look at somebody who can say, hey, I've done it, so quit whining. Because that's what he said. <laughs> I, find, I find quite a few people, I tell them, yeah, send your kids to Brockton High, it's a great place to be in there. A lot of that with the first one, they're nervous about it. And the ones that are in the band, the freshmen come out and say, he's the meanest man I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and then they leave the seniors, and they, they don't want to leave because I want to keep playing for Mr. McCreaner. So that's, that's teaching them and that's making them grow. That's a great thing you've done. So Let me just say, for, on behalf of our state representatives, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Vinnie Macrina in recognition of your leadership of the Brockton High School Band and service as a 2018 Holiday Parade Marshal. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this 23rd day of March 2019 at the State House of Boston, Massachusetts, signed by Robert A. DeLeo, Speaker of the House, offered by Claire Cronin, State Representative, Jerry Cassidy, State Representative, and Michelle M. Dubois, State Rep Representative. Thank you, Vinny, for all you've done for the city. afternoon, but students would not be the talented and gifted students they are with great coaches and great leaders and great music directors. And as was mentioned, these students go on to some of the best colleges in the world. And Brockton is put on the map because of people like Vinnie McCrina, who leads our band, our jazz band, with all the advanced students. They get recognized all over the Commonwealth. And we're so proud and honored to be elected officials representing the city of Brockton with people like Vinnie McCrina coaching these kids. Because as was mentioned from John to and, and Tim, he doesn't mess around, he has tight discipline. And it puts these kids on the right track. And they, they may be difficult days when he's trying to keep them on the straight now, but they'll come back 10 years later and thank him for keeping them on the straight now. And as I mentioned, some of these students go on to the most successful careers, whether it be music and mathematics, goes hand in hand with music and all of the above. So, I'm honored to present this citation to Vinnie McCrina. Congratulations and recognition of your receipt of a special presentation honoring your distinguished career as a Brockton High School band leader in your service as a 2018 Holiday Parade Grand Marshal. And this is signed by the President of the Senate, Karen Spilka, the Clerk, Michael Hurley, myself, Mike Brady. And I'm honored to be a senator when we have people like Vinnie McCrina leading us on the, on the bands in Brockton. So Thank you. Um, I, thank you for the, all the accolades and so on, but before, before I, I wasn't going to say anything, but um, a great coach and a great teacher, uh, what we call, I say, is it's a 50-50 job. Uh, we can go out there and do it so on, but we have to have the students to also go out there and be out there and work hard and, and be involved day and night, whatever it takes to, to become whatever, whether it's baseball, band, and so on. In the last, since I started 1981 and 71, I have been blessed, and I also want to thank Jim, James Green, chairman of the school board, who uh, did my student teaching here, uh, and I was ready to leave to go back to the conservatory, and he asked me, 
The Broughton High School Gymnasium was the last, last building to be finished. So we had a big party to open up the school for the next year. And he came up to me and said, can you get a little group together to kind of play? I said, sure, Mr. Green, not a problem. And then we performed, everybody loved it. He says, um, are you a member of my staff, our staff? And so on, no, I'm going back to get my, uh, my, uh, my uh, uh, master's degree. He says, uh, I might even go on the road. He said, well, we'd like to hire you to become, he said, I gotta think about that, I said. So I went home, spoke to my mom, to my father, as you know, he said, English was not our first language, <clears throat> and we managed very well. Although the kids will say to you, I kill the, the language once in a while. Um, out there, and I said, Dad, what do you think? He says, they want to give me a job, Dad, I want to go back. He goes, and I'll still remember to this day, he looks at me and goes, hey, he says, take the job. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, if you believe in, if you believe in, uh, in destiny, uh, I do. Um, my father migrated here and worked at Stacy Adams with my uncle, sponsored by him. And my father actually was a custom tailor and worked for Tonis, downtown Broughton. An exceptional, an exceptional uh, place. You know, it's really interesting that he could have migrated to, to other places of the world, or the United States, I should say. You know, why, why not Boston and so on? But somehow I ended up over here, and the first day I graduated from Broughton High School, I did my student teaching, and I never had gone anywhere. And I do have to say this, I wouldn't change anything or any school system, and I've been offered many opportunities to go to colleges, to go to other school system. I will trade the Brockton High School kids, all this entire city, for anything. I think there's a lot of people that don't know really what's going on here. We have to find it, and we still do, because a lot of people say it's changed. Eh, listen, the great kids are always there. As a matter of fact, I've had more kids in the last 10 years go and become first players of the St. Louis Symphony, first lead, lead trumpet player, assistant lead player with Brian Setz's band, first principal trumpet with the, with the um, Singapore Symphony. They were in Broadway, they are playing all over the place more and more and more, and the kids there are always there. Yeah, we change a little bit, and I also want to say to the administrators, to all the mayors I had, they somehow people are stunned how a city like this can carry on tradition of arts while we're supposed to be a city, we're not supposed to be like that, but if you really think about it, it has been embedded in this city a great deal. It has been an honor to work with all the kids I've had, and it's been a great place to see them out there, just become a great place, and doctors and lawyers, and I had them all, um, including the last one that went to Harvard University out there, who couldn't remember how to open the door, and I was a doctor. Um, <laughs> And I let them know all of that at the beginning. So thank you for all, John, and, and John, of course, my friend here for 35 years. Yes, it was cold that evening. All the instruments froze to death. Nobody was there, and everybody wanted to go out there, so we finally changed. And the other thing I want to say, the community thing, kids, we can't take away things like this. The kids are dying for things that we used to have when we were young. We might not think they don't like but they do. They love the traditions. They love when I talk about how our problems were. Talk to, talk to us about the problem. We tell them how we went in there and how we did and what we did and so on and this and that. And that's probably the only time that they kind of quiet. And they really listen to that more than some other times and some of the things that we, we try to say. But traditions like this have to stay because we these kids are getting away from there. We're becoming, we're making them robots. And you know, between family breaking up and all kinds of things, there's a major problem that's going on. A lot, a lot of people want to write books about it, but it's a very simple solution. So the school system, I want to thank. I know Mike is here. That's unfortunate. I wish I was back another 20 years to work with with with, with him now as, as as an interim, and obviously maybe the superintendent. We got great, great, great leaders and great students. We have the works. We have the workers in here supported is the important thing because the school department is one of the greatest things that we have in the city. Thank you.
if we could just keep your attention for a few more moments. And I would like to ask my fellow gorgeous, amazing, beautiful muses to join me on stage. And I would like to ask Gail to come up with her family.
what she did and um, the kind words so many people um, from the Brockton community um, shared with me. And in the mail, uh, where she, I, I got a phone call from um, where that, um, from the people that I was attending her funeral and uh, my, my, my length. Um, and they said, oh, she, there's a plaque here for her. And I said, oh, okay. She actually got an, uh, a plaque from, um, from, a, set, from a, a representative, state representative, and um, I forgot his name. And I'm like, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's like totally big deal. Like, I did not know that she was known um, around that much. And it meant a lot to her, and it means a lot to her children. And um, I hope that um, I can uh, place the passion and the commitment that she did and she implemented for the city of Brockton to her children and that they can follow her footsteps. Her oldest uh, apologized that he couldn't be here tonight. He was visiting um, a college to play ball and he was offered full scholarship to play basketball for them. So um, I know we And I want to thank, I, I, I thank you so much for the advice. Um, and I thank you for everybody behind me. Uh, she loved each and every one of you guys. She spoke fondly of each and every, every one of you guys. And she absolutely devoted her heart. She spoke, devoted her health um, to complete each task that um, to be able to complete um, anything that you guys asked of her, she was able to accomplish it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart um, and for her children. I'm sure the twins would like to say something. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Thank you.